Hi and welcome to pattern 1803 Chloe's Camisole Peplum Top Sew Along video. Uh, for this pattern it's a woven pattern so we're going to be using our plain sewing machine to sew this and the seam allowances on this pattern are one centimeter which is three eighths of an inch and then I'm going to be using an overlocker to tidy up the edges and we only need three threads of um, three cops of threads in that overlocker to finish the edges off. So when you're ready go ahead and um, thread up your sewing machine and your overlocker with the colours that match the main part of your fabric. So in addition to this we're going to need either pre-purchased bias binding or you can do what I'm going to show you how to do in this video and it's how to use a binding attachment on a sewing machine. So my binding attachment attaches to a commercial sewing machine but you can buy binding attachments for domestic sewing machines um, they work exactly the same way and they're really great to use for tidying our edges off so I'll show you this based on a binding attachment but you can of course just go ahead and attach that bias binding in any way you choose so I'm going to use self fabric binding strips but as the pattern suggests you can go and buy pre-purchased pre-made binding for this pattern. So uh, let's get started we'll take our back piece and start from there. So take your back piece and we're going to overlock this narrow edge here with a three thread overlock. Now I've left my left needle in but you can remove it if you prefer. So just go ahead and overlock that on the edge. Okay so now we're going to jump straight in and move to our binder and get our binding out of the way. So the binder I'm using today is a 3 16 binder which is a 30mm or will give us an 8mm finish binding. Um, so the first part we're going to bind is this V neckline here, the centre front. So making sure your fabric is right side up, run your binding from this peak here to this peak here. So we're going to start by feeding it in, making sure it's butted in all the way to the edge. And try not to stretch it too much as you go. This fabric I'm using today is a very slippery polyester. Um, and as you can tell, I'm doing the binding in a contrast color. So when we get to the V part here what we want to do is open this up so that when we bind we want to effectively create a straight line. Now if that doesn't want to open up too much to create a straight line just take a very small nick in it and then continue sewing. Right, so if you have pre-purchased bias binding, just sew your bias binding in on the way that you normally would. So um, there's the beginnings of our centre front neckline. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to sew in the strapping. So we're going to start at the underarm point here. So the main thing when you do this is make sure you've got a nice long length on your binding. Take a pair of scissors. <laughs> And using your eye just estimate where that line goes off and trim that nice and flush. Now as you can tell here I've got a bit of a jagged edge so I'm just going to smooth that off. So we want to make sure that everything is quite smooth when we start sewing this. Right. So starting at this underarm point here. Bind on. Just going to get my tweezers. Here we are. Just so I make sure I get a nice tight edge when I come off here. Okay, so now I need to leave a gap to be the shoulder strap. So I'm just going to continue on binding this through. 
Now we need to leave a gap here of 22 centimeters, which is eight and three quarters of an inch. Now the exact gap will depend on the length you want this to be. That's a suggested guideline for a medium. What you could do is pin this in place and try it on if you're making this for yourself. But that should be a pretty good starting point um, for most sizes. As you go down a size, you could drop that by a quarter of an inch. And I'll put a suggested gap guide in the information um, instructions for this. But yeah, so we want to leave around about 22 centimeters, which is nine inches for this strapping. So when you have left nine inches or eight and three quarters there, what you need to do is take your back piece. So that's the piece we've just overlocked and making sure it's right sides up. We want to turn the piece we overlocked under at the notch position. So you'll have a notch here which will show us the turn point. And if you want to, you could go ahead and press that with your iron. What we need to do now is feed that into our binder. So that notch position needs to go into our binding here. And then continue binding. If you've pre-bought um, binding, so ready-made binding, you'll find this a lot easier because you'll be able to pin it as you go. It's a little bit more difficult when you're um, doing self-fabric binding. So now we've um, done one part, we need to do exactly what we've done on the other side. Right, so just repeat exactly what we did before. We're going to start at the other underarm position. Going to tidy up the angle here to make sure it sews off nicely. And I'm going to use my long needled um, tweezers just to make sure that gets tucked right in. And I'm going to sew on for 22 centimeters, which is just short of nine inches. Now making sure I haven't twisted this, and as you can tell this is in reverse, I'm going to make sure that that fold position there is right on the edge. So that's all we need our binder for. I'm going to replace this back with my regular foot now. So because we want a nice crisp V to the front of our camisole, we're just going to sew a small mitre there. So right sides together, find the center front position and you can just match the side seam and uh, the top here. And what we want to do is just sew a small line. Now it'll be 
three mils or an eighth of an inch from the top edge and angle it back to the very edge of the bias binding and we want to sew it through the bias binding only so you need to make sure that those edges are just perfectly aligned and it's really just a small back tacking stitch so we're making just a small triangle and when you've done that just tidy up your threads so as you can see here once that's pressed we'll have a nice V shape a smart V shape for the front of our camisole right so we're now going to um, just sew down this area here at the center back you don't have to um, if you prefer to leave it if your fabric will look better without it it's perfectly acceptable to just press that down or um, you can sew a line through it so just sew a line through the overlocking stitches to hide them and you will need to back tack at the beginning and end okay and I'm just going to do some quality control work and tidy up my stitches so now we need to place this right sides together and sew the side seams. The seam allowances are one centimeter, which is three eighths of an inch. off the excess binding and then sew the other side seam now it's a good idea to sew it from the binding edge the underarm down that way you'll get the edges perfectly sitting on top of each other Now go across to your overlocker and we're going to uh, tidy up that edge by overlocking directly on the edge. So when you sew this leave a small tail because we'll tidy that up um, later and we just want to um, overlock directly on the edge through both layers. And then twist and do the other side seam overlocking. work on the peplum the first thing we're going to do is take both of our pieces and place them right sides together and we're going to sew a seam on the short edges to sew them into a tube so when you're ready place those right sides together and sew the short edge remembering to back tack at the beginning and the end And I'm going to use my thread guide here and sew a one centimeter seam. So one centimeter is just short of three eighths of an inch. It's close enough to three eighths of an inch that that'll be fine. So just make sure all those raw edges are lined up. When you've done one side, sew the other side. <laughs> 
So now go to your overlocker and tidy that edge up. So now um, with all sewing it's a really good idea to sew a seam and then press a seam. So you can go ahead and do that if you want. Make sure those seams press towards the back. Um, what I'm going to do now is jump on ahead and we're going to sew the peplum hem. So there's been a one centimetre seam allowance used for this which is three eighths of an inch. So if you wanted to you could do a double fold there remembering there is only one centimetre allowed for or you could overlock turn up and flat stitch. So that's what I'm going to do. So starting at one of the side seams I'm going to overlock directly on the edge of this fabric. Okay, so if you need to go to your iron now and turn that up 3 eighths of an inch and press that into position before we sew the hem. So I'm going to start and finish my hem from the same position I start and finish my overlocking from. So turn it up by 3 eighths of an inch and if you have any thread from the overlocking now's a good time to tuck that into the seam and stitch through your overlocking line making sure that your seams sit exactly on top of each other and we've allowed one centimeter so make sure the width is one centimeter Now um, one thing I didn't mention is the edge of the hem is the edge that does not have the notches in it but if you've sewn the wrong one it's not a problem we can just create a notch. So the notches um, in this peplum are to help us with our gathering to show us the centre front. So if you've gone ahead and sewn the wrong hem which I'm guessing I may have of all you need to do is turn this right sides together place the seams right side together and come to the fold position and make a small notch so that will become a center and we'll do the same thing on the other side and that will become the center and for this pattern it doesn't matter which is the center front and the center back it's up to you um, both pattern pieces are exactly the same so you don't have to worry about the single notch and the double notch. Right so now um, if you haven't already it's a good idea to go and press this making sure those seams press towards what you're going to be calling the back. So I've just pressed this fabric which has made a huge difference to the way it sits and before we go any further and attach the, um, the gathered peplum onto the top I just want to tidy up these side seams as you can tell where we do the piping here sorry the binding here um, it's a bit messy what we're going to do is leave a small tail on your overlocking like that tuck it down and making sure the seam is facing the back I'm just going to sew a couple of stitches 
on top of that binding just to hold that into position. It'll just tidy up that edge and just make it look a little bit nicer when it's being worn. And when you've done it on that side, do it on this side as well. So I want to cut back till there's maybe one and a half centimetres, which is nine sixteenths of an inch there. Um, making sure that's facing the back, tuck that under. And just sew on top of the existing stitching line, just a few stitches. snip off um, some excess thread just do some quality control work right so now we're going to move on to gathering the pet plump if you have a gathering foot you can use that um, gathering feet do take a little bit of adjustment I'm just going to do an old-fashioned gather so an old-fashioned gather is basically what we're going to do is pull out an extra length of thread here lengthen your stitch length to tacking length so that's probably from a two and a half to a four and I'm going to run a row of stitches on the stitching line well when I say on the stitching line the stitching line is one centimeter which is nine sorry just short of three eighths of an inch so I'm going to run a line of stitches just on the inside of that so just short of that so what I want to do is when it's gathered I don't have to remove the gathering thread unless you want to in which case it's up to you so I'm going to sew one row of gathers on the front from side to seam to side seam and one on the back from side seam to side seam so just short of one centimeter making sure that stitch length is lengthened Right, so I know which is the front and the back because my side seams are facing towards the back and that's fine. So when you gather, make sure you only pull the thread on uh, one side of your fabric and I always make sure I only pull it on the right side of my fabric. So making sure there's only one thread on top and starting with the front, I'm just going to gently gather this together. And what I'll do is I'll just put a um, pin in my notch, which is my center front, just so I can keep an eye on it as I'm working. As you can tell, this fabric is very slippery. So at this stage I'm just guesstimating the amount of gathers and I'll go to the other side and do exactly the same thing. So now I'm going to repeat that for the back. 
is my notch So now we need to make sure our stitch length goes back to what it was before and we'll go ahead and pin the peplum onto the base of the camisole. Now I know this was the back I was working on here so what I'm going to do is right sides together, find the back of my camisole. So what I want to do is match the notch at the bottom centre of the back to the notch on my peplum. Then you want to come to the side seam and match the side seams. Work your way around, find the centre front notch and match it to the notch on your peplum. Come around and match the other side seam notch. Sorry, match the other side seam. So now we're in a position to adjust our gathers to the correct amount to fit our garment. So I always find it's a good idea if you start at a side seam and work on the back first. So making sure the piece with the gathers, the peplum is on top. We just want to sew a couple of stitches at that side seam to secure the side seam in the correct position. Remembering we have a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to back tack. Now sewing those couple of stitches will give us a nice anchor point at the beginning. So what we need to do now is find our notch position which is the position that we pinned in place. So we have two positions we have to distribute that ease of the gathering between nice and smoothly. And as you can tell that's pretty good but I need to make sure that more of it is up this direction. So basically we're working on a quarter of the garment. So just take your time and holding your thumb on the pin and the notch position, just adjust the gathering ratio until it's even most of the way across. Now if you have a gathering foot you can spend your time checking that gathering ratio and doing it all properly but this is a really good home sewing method that certainly doesn't hurt if you're just sewing one of these. If you're sewing multiple of these you will need to use your gathering foot and check that ratio. So when you're comfortable that's in the correct position start sewing and we want to sew just to the left of the gathers so we want to sew almost on that stitch line but you want to make sure when you sew that you don't create a pleat in it. You just want to um, have that nice gentle gathering. 
and the reason we want to sew just to the side is so we don't have to remove our gathering stitches and if you do this in a colour that's close to your fabric you shouldn't see them so as you can tell my whole time my hand's been anchored on that notch position my right hand so as you get closer you can release that and take that pin away so we've now sewn a quarter of that garment on now we're going to do the same thing again but instead of um, our thumb being on notch our thumb is now going to be on that side seam so for this piece just make sure that underlay is out of the way I just need to readjust these gathers to suit and I gathered too much of this up so now I'm just going to release a little bit off as I adjust and I'll sew up to that notch before I go any further As you come across to the side seam make sure that side seam is exactly on top of each other and now just repeat over the front So now all we need to do is move over to the overlocker and tidy up this raw edge here. So when you go to overlock tidy this, it's a good idea to start and finish your overlocking um, on the left hand side or at the side that you started sewing from. Also it's a good idea to make sure the gathering side, the peplum side is on top and just take your time because you don't want to cut anything off that you shouldn't. Okay, so that's the end of our sew-along video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this sew-along video. 
Um, remember to go ahead and join up with my Facebook Pattern Discussion group where we can have um, lots of hints, tips and tutorials on sewing. And I look forward to you joining me for my next Sew Along video soon.